Look, I'm going to move on to the next question, and actually it's the third most important thing in the poll about why people are or want to be part of a group, and it's about telling our farming story. Um, communicating within the catchment, you've heard about, it's obviously fairly important, but I'm just interested, and again, this is an open one, I'm not necessarily going to go around, but um, for the group, how do you tell your story, in particular, I guess, to people that aren't in the catchment or aren't in farming, maybe live in the catchment but aren't part of farming, What's the, what are the ways you're getting the story out there or you can communicate with people. I'm going to give you a chance to have a think about that one because we're also going to ask those of you that are listening, this would be interested in your feedback, certainly for Beef and Land New Zealand, how can we tell the story of community catchment groups, what they're doing, their successes, their achievements, their goals, their aims, all the stuff we've been talking about. How can Beef and Land New Zealand communicate that story um, on behalf of, of sheep and beef farmers, on behalf of basically all the industries that are involved in these catchments. So feel free, fire those away in the chat. I'm just wondering whether any of our uh, speakers have got some ideas on um, how we can tell our story. And I see a couple of hands waving. So uh, Roger, I think you might have been first off first hand. Right, thanks Aaron. Yeah, I'm pretty passionate about this one. Um, and I'm heavily involved in beef and lamb and I'm being told on a regular basis as along with every other beef and lamb person that we need to tell our story. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's BS. Um, I don't think we do, do can tell our story because I'll give the analogy that if I'm a ram breeder, I can tell everyone how great I am at breeding rams and not one of you will listen. But if everyone else on this, on this call thing tells everyone else that I'm a great ram breeder, then everyone listens. And so when we come to telling our story about our catchment group, we can't tell it ourselves. We have to provide the information and record the information um, that allows others to tell our story on our behalf. And I'm talking about our regional councils, I'm talking about the government, I'm talking about social media, I'm talking about fish and game, uh, I'm talking about Greenpeace, that might be a challenge, that one. Um, but we need to gather the information and, and provide it in a manner that, are, that is easy for them to capture or easy for them to understand uh, and tell the story on our behalf. It's as simple as that. And we haven't been able to do that in the past, but forming our catchment groups, our sub-catchment groups, and capturing the data in an incorporated society, and sharing that in a controlled manner um, uh, to, the, to the appropriate areas, um, it's gonna be a great story. Thanks, Roger. And Mark, what you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, rural New Zealand, um, we're really good at telling people what we do and we're really good at telling them how we do it, but we are rubbish at telling people why we do what we do. And I mean, it's old, um, sort of old news, I mean, the, the how, the what and the why. But until we as farmers sort of personally sort of think about, you know, what, why are we farming? Why do we care about the environment? Uh, why do we want to get a, a community catchment group up and running? And we start infusing our story with, with those messages around why we're motivated to do what we're doing. Um, I, I don't, I, until we, we sort of tap into that, um, I don't think we're going to get the cut through that we're looking for when it comes to trying to always explain what it is that we're doing. So just, it's just something to reflect on, really. Thank you. Mark? Uh, Rick? Yeah, look. Roger made a really good point about um, third party actually telling that story. And I think this is a great opportunity with community catchment groups. It's not, I know we, we sort of, we can um, form our groups in small hubs, but we also can connect to um, the urban folk. And uh, if we look, we think about Kaitiaki Tanga from the mountains to the sea concept, um, we can make that connection with, with, a, with our high country um, catchment groups right down to our lowland uh, groups and connect with urban and um, get that, getting those guys along to meetings, telling them what, what, what's going on um, and telling them, telling them what the progress you are making. And some of the progress um, you know, we've seen here with the, the improvement of biodiversity uh, around the restoration of wetlands and uh, riparian planting, et cetera. Is really is a really good news story, and people just, particularly the urban folk, they love that stuff. So um, it's actually going beyond our boundaries, and um, oh, we're very lucky, I suppose, because we've got a very short catch pin from the from Kaimo Range down to, to the from the back of our farm. We can see the estuary 
So, um, but across all our catchments, if we can make those connections all the way down, include the townsfolk, um, that's when the stories really get out there. Thanks, Rick. Anna, I think you were just giving a thumbs up before. You weren't waving at me at all. All right, look, what we're going to do now, um, sharing information is a key part. That's what this webinar is about. But sharing information uh, for catchment community groups is really important for us. So I'm actually going to, now if we can work the technology, Richard, this is your time to shine. We're just going to go do a wee uh, demo of Beef and Lamb New Zealand's community catchment group page, which has a lot of the information we've referred to or that you may have been asking about on it. And it also has a, uh, a national map of all the, the catchment community groups in place so people know where each other are and can possibly make contact and do some of that, that sharing. So while we're bringing that, that up, remember um, if you've got ideas for Beef and Lamb New Zealand in terms of how we can tell the story, um, you know, um, get their message out there about these two other farmers, two non-farmers about what's happening in the space, please fire it up and, and chat. We're really interested to hear. So. Richard, I think it's you've got control. How does that look, Aaron? Has that come through okay? I can see the, the page, the web page. Yeah, so Beef and Lamb's Catchment Community Program, we've put it together based on a lot of the insights um, from the likes of the farmers you've been hearing from today. So Beef and Lamb's program is very much about supporting our farmers um, to be active participants in catchment community processes or where they don't exist in setting them up. Um, from beef and lamb's uh, position or point of view, we don't see ourselves as, as owning catchment groups. Uh, we see catchment groups as being quite autonomous and self-defining and, uh, and um, you know, particularly for our farming communities, for farming led. And it very much speaks to beef and lamb's vision, which is profitable farmers, thriving farming communities valued by all New Zealanders. So, um, yeah, on the catchment webpage, we've got a whole lot of resources and I've seen a lot of the chat coming through and a, a lot of what you're asking about, uh, hopefully you'll, 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 you'll find in here or, uh, or it's under, under development. But um, based on a lot of that feedback from your chat, that gives us really powerful insight to, to develop and shape the program. So like Aaron said, um, we've got a, a catchment map uh, and this catchment map is very much for, uh, I'll see if I can zoom in. It's very much for <coughs> groups to plot themselves and connect with each other in a, in a secure fashion. And it's, it's not dependent on uh, beef and lamb having to run it in the background. So if you're interested in Roger's group here in the Rangatiki, you can click on them, you can find some information. And if you want to send them a secure message, um, there you go, that's how you can do it. And likewise, if you're a facilitator or a coordinator, or you feel as if you have some uh, value to, uh, to offer to catchment groups, um, we've just tweaked the map so that you can add um, a, uh, a facilitator. So if we look here in the wider wrapper, we've got Esther Dykstra, and there's a bit of information about her and if we want to send some information to Esther. So this map is completely user driven. So we won't put catchment groups or facilitators on. That's for groups to put themselves on. And obviously the more people that are on it and the more people that, that use it, um, then we'll kind of achieve that critical mass um, for, it, for it to really work. So hosting these kind of um, uh, e-forums, that's a key part of our, our program. Um, we were getting alongside New Zealand Landcare Trust for the National Catchment Forum in Invercargill, but unfortunately, due to the uh, um, COVID-19 pandemic, that, that got cancelled. But we'll definitely be working going forward and looking at how we um, can connect farmers and um, ensure that people can share their learning and experience with catchment groups um, so we can almost develop um, as uh, I guess catchment group practitioners. So people are kind of interested in how our program works. Um, we have no prescription or, or we don't say how catchment groups um, should set themselves up. But what we've been able to do is identify um, kind of some process, some key themes about what makes a group successful. You know, that's been really clear on knowing why they're coming together. Um, 
what their vision is for their catchment, what they've already got that's, that's great, um, what actions they're going to take and how they'll tell their story. We've got this, uh, our first catchment e-learning module that people can go through and that, that'll give them quite a flavour of the pro program. And then a couple of months we'll have the second one of these e-learning modules going live, which is very much for people who've already got a group and uh, how, to, how to get that ticking along. Richard, one of the questions we've had, and I think um, was about job descriptions for, for coordinators or, or support people, what do you, you call them? Um, there's some on the, probably don't yeah. need to go into them, but that, we've got some on the Beaton Lane website. Yeah, so if you look at this, and um, I didn't, what the web designers call is an accordion, um, you'll see here we've got role of a coordinator, and if you click the drop down, you can view an example of a service agreement. So, um, yeah, it's if you have a good explorer in here, you'll find all sorts of stuff. Likewise, through the the catchment map, you could connect with other groups and uh, either offer to share a resource that you may have, uh, or ask them if they've got a resource that you could share. And when you look at some of the examples we put on this website, these examples come from groups. We're not um, delivering uh, or developing uh, templates for the, for the sake of a template. Uh, and where we can, we'll um, link through to uh, other, other resources. Um, so you'll, awesome. you'll, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Richard.